Hi, this is Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington, and today I wanted to talk about this mid-70s FG-160 that I just got done fixing up for the shop. This guitar is on sale. There is a ad in the description of this video uh, that will either be to a reverb page or a, a Craigslist ad uh, for this guitar, and if it is still on sale, those links will be active. If it is sold, those links will not be active. So. Uh, I can take questions maybe about these uh, if you s submit them through my Kofi. Um, but uh, you know, uh, if it's if it's sold, it's sold. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, without further ado, uh, let me go ahead and talk about what we did to this guitar, and uh, kind of play it for you, and so you can hear what it sounds like. So I'm going to go ahead and strum some chords on this, let you hear what it sounds like, and uh, then we'll go ahead and talk about why it sounds that way. Yeah, um, it's had some upgrades, um, you know, since coming in here. It was a guitar that I got in on a trade for some repair work that I did for a client. Um, and uh, for all of the guitars that I sell here, I always I add upgrades. I always do a lot of work on them and uh, go through them very thoroughly and make sure that uh, any issues that you're going to run into on a vintage guitar aren't present on the guitar that you get from my shop, which is really great because if you're uh, you know, a vintage guitar person, um, like you might know that it's kind of like going out and buying like a, an old classic car. If you get one that's not in great condition, you can plan on probably spending a lot of money fixing it up. Well, all of that has actually been done to this guitar, and so you're not really going to be dealing with any of those vintage guitar problems. It's pretty much going to act like a, you know, a new guitar, but with the benefits of uh, having had years to break in, warm up, develop a really nice vintage tone. Uh, you know, so you're basically getting kind of the best sides of getting a, a vintage guitar without the worst sides of getting a vintage guitar. Um, so go ahead and talk about this thing. This is a uh, this is a uh, Taiwanese. Um, uh, Yamaha, that means it was not built at the uh, Japanese Matsumoku factory. Uh, but that being said, um, these Taiwanese uh, Yamahas were built to uh, the same specs. Uh, they uh, play nice, they sound great. Um, you know, it, it'd be hard pressed to tell the difference by listening um, to either of these two guitars, what the differences may be. The only differences that I've ever noticed between the uh, two is in the finish work, in the neck shape kind of superficial stuff like that, but the tone and everything is the same. Um, so as far as upgrades that this guitar has gotten, um, the first that I'll talk about is that I gave this guitar a custom made uh, bone nut. These nuts start as a solid rectangular bone blank and are cut specifically to the guitar that they go on. The string spacing on here is custom to the guitar. Um, and uh, you know, it's uh, cut about as low as I can get a nut with uh, leaving it enough to you know, leaving it enough space to have some longevity. Um, the the uh, nut slots in this guitar are cut in such a way that uh, you will actually have improved tuning stability because the strings are more easy, or, or, or uh, the strings more easily glide through these uh, polished and curved uh, sculpted slots that I uh, do here at the shop. Um, that kind of put them a little bit above, you know, what you typically find stock on a guitar, even even ones with bone nuts. Um, bone nuts uh, enable more uh, overtones to come through the neck. Uh, again, tuning stability, uh, longevity. These don't wear out like plastic ones do, uh, and it looks better. Um, if you look at the pictures in the ad that you're presumably looking at or getting this video from, uh, you'll be able to see that, um, you know, having something custom cut really does kind of add a little bit of a, a little bit of a nice shine to the guitar, um, which is nice. Um, one of the things that has been done to this guitar that I really wish uh, more, uh, you know, companies would do to vintage guitars is that these frets have been worked. Um, on older guitars, uh, it's not uncommon to run into uh, fret issues, as in like, 
the frets that are in the guitar, maybe some of them have let go and are kind of coming up. Um, some of them have pitting in them and, uh, you know, other issues like that can, that can lead to playability issues. It's one of the things that kind of interferes with the guitar's ability to take a nice low setup because if the fret surfaces aren't completely level and you try to lay the strings down as close to the board as you can get them, you're going to be fighting those frets in terms of how low you can go because the lower that you go, the more those discrepancies in the fret height end up interfering with your playing and you'll end up with buzzing and rattling and all kinds of little weird noises. And in the cases of frets that have actually kind of let go, you may end up with some like dead notes where you pluck it and it's just kind of like, it almost sounds like you're muting it with a piece of cardboard or something. Really weird. But anyway, these frets have been uh, freshly glued into their slots. Um, I've gone through, leveled them, crowned them, that is to say, I've reformed the, uh, the round surface on top so that you have a perfect contact point right in the middle of the fret where it belongs. And I've gone through and repolished them so they look pretty, but more importantly than that, the polishing is to prevent little like scratchy noises when you're bending notes, um, which, you know, can come with, you know, kind of poor leveling jobs. Um, another thing that was done to this guitar was uh, that it got a neck reset. Um, the neck reset that this guitar got, uh, because it's a Taiwanese guitar, one of the other differences between the, uh, the Taiwanese guitars and uh, some of the other ones is that we're not necessarily sure like what glues were used and when. Um, and so typically uh, with Japanese guitars, uh, you know, I am kind of a little suspect uh, when I go in to do neck resets whether or not I'm going to do a steam job or whether or not I'm going to do what I did to this guitar. With this guitar here, um, what it got was a, uh, a bolt-on conversion neck reset, which is to say that the neck was m removed mechanically um, with a uh, razor saw and uh, done very precisely. And then the angle was reset um, after that cut was made. And then the neck was actually reattached using, uh, using uh, bolts, um, but also glue. Um, the glue is mainly there to provide a good contact surface between the neck and the body so that you're not really losing any of, that, uh, any of those overtones coming in through the neck. Um, it's a very, very solid way of doing these neck resets, and it will stay good for pretty much the life of any other neck reset, except that this one will also be easier to do again in the future decades down the line when it needs one again. Um, whoever works on this will be able to actually go in and undo those bolts and, uh, you know, reset the neck without, uh, you know, without having to do a whole lot of steaming and stuff. And that makes it a much cheaper job. Here, I charge usually for a steamed neck job um, around like 450, um, whereas somebody brings me like some sort of Taylor or uh, Collings or something that's got, you know, bolts in it. Those can run anywhere between like 170 to 200. It's a, it's a much easier procedure. It's less invasive for the guitar. And so uh, I generally haven't had a problem um, uh, ethically going in and doing a neck reset like this on, on one of these older guitars, um, especially if it's kind of in the, uh, in the echelon of production that the, this FG-160 is in. Um, so that has been done. The neck angle, the neck reset, and I'm gonna go ahead and link to a video that I did about neck resets in the description. If you're curious, you can go watch that. But mainly what that means is that you're able to get this really nice low action. Um, because older guitars over time, the uh, backs will tend to stretch and the necks will tend to settle out in the direction that force is being applied. And in the case of a guitar, the force is being applied by these strings kind of pulling the neck forward. What that means is that many, many times when you buy an older guitar, an older vintage guitar, it's going to need a neck reset. And again, that's a very expensive procedure that's already been done to this guitar. So it's not something that you're gonna to have to worry about, but it does mean that you're able to get this nice low action with a nice high saddle and a nice high bridge, which are all very, very important things to tone overall. Really like that's kind of the ideal situation for your guitar is to have the low action, high saddle, high bridge. That's the sign of a healthy neck angle, a healthy guitar that's able to take a really nice setup, which is what you've got here. Um, moving on down the line uh, to the uh, saddle. Uh, the saddle is another piece of custom cut bone, uh, specifically cut to this guitar, um, tightly fit to the saddle slot, and is compensated so that your intonation is actually better up and down the neck. Um, you can kind of hear that in uh, you know playing these octaves up here. Um, 
lot, pre pretty close for an acoustic guitar. Acoustic guitars are never going to be perfect, but this one is is really really close. Um, the other thing that a bone nut or a bone saddle will give you is that bone is a nice hard material that transfers frequencies very well. Um, so as opposed to plastic and the kind of uh, kind of saddles that came on these old Yamahas were actually a kind of plastic. I believe that they were some kind of um, fiberglass impregnated resin of some sort. Um, but what they would do, uh, what all of those saddles generally do is kind of give you a little bit of loss in your high end. Um, those high end frequencies have a hard time making it through surfaces that are, uh, that are kind of um, softer. And so generally speaking, when you put something like that in the guitar, you're kind of losing a little bit. Whereas putting bone in the guitar, you're actually activating those, those highs and really getting a full range of frequencies. Now I do a lot of home recording. Um, frankly, like if it comes down to a choice of having less frequencies or more frequencies to work with, I'm always gonna opt to have more frequencies just because I can always go in in my EQ afterwards and I can step things down to where I want them, but the frequencies have to be there in the first place in order for me to actually do that. Um, you know, anybody who's out, out there watching this who's a sound engineer knows exactly what I'm talking about. You gotta, have, you gotta have everything you're working with right there in the original recording, otherwise you just don't have it. You know, this isn't CSI. We can't like just say enhance, you know, and get something that doesn't exist. So having that bone in there really does help with getting the, uh, getting the high end, getting a lot of sparkle out of the guitar, but also getting volume and headroom. Um, because one of the other things that the, that the uh, plastic saddles can do is they can kind of rob a little bit of that volume. It's kind of like, again, putting a little bit of a mute there and, and uh, trying to play through that mute. And you're just not going to get as much energy through the guitar, whereas bone is going to transfer all of that energy very, very well. Um, and again, you add that sparkle, that, that nice uh, quality, while also maintaining, especially in an old vintage guitar like this, nice lows. So, I mean... <laughs> Really, really healthy, nice lows and sparkling highs. Really nice. Um, and uh, another thing that was done to this guitar here was that uh, these uh, pins were uh, custom, uh, the pinholes here were custom reamed for these bone pins. Um, bone pins uh, are a great thing to have in a guitar because, for one thing, um, durability. If you've ever looked at plastic pins that have seen some years, you'll notice that they are pretty chewed up and they're in the process of chewing up the holes that they're going into as well, you know, while you're taking those in and out every time you're restringing the guitar, which is something worth keeping in mind. Um, plastic pins also tend to break, um, sometimes leaving you with like the pin just kind of stuck in the hole and you know some difficulty in getting that out and by the way i'll link a video to uh, how to get those out also in the description um but um more than that uh custom reamed pins that are made out of a nice hard solid material also do tonally benefit the instrument um it's a more subtle difference i'd say than the saddle or the or the nut um, but what you'll notice is that there's a little bit more sustain and just a little bit more sparkle and both of those things are really good to have, in my opinion. Um, the sustain without the loss of attack um, that you get by putting the bone pins in is really, really nice. And uh, having just, again, that little bit of extra sparkle, we're talking about frequencies and you know having more frequencies to work with, just a richer sound in general, but also when you go in to do your EQ after, afterwards, like you've got more to work with. Um, now, in terms of stuff that I've done to this guitar, um, this guitar has also received a, a nice low setup. Um, nuts perfectly dialed in, necks perfectly dialed in, uh, string height and radius are both perfectly dialed in. Um, playing this guitar is extremely comfortable and uh, nice and low, no buzzing. Um, really, really solid and fun instrument to play. I've been messing around with it all day. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, I would say that this thing would be a great guitar if you're uh, if you're an experienced player, but maybe you want to have uh, you know something more vintagey lying around, or you know you want uh, maybe you have a, a, a higher end vintage Yamaha and you want one that's kind of got the same tone, but you want one that's kind of a little bit more of a beater. This would be a good option for you, and even be a good option for somebody who's a new student. Again, this has had all of its problems already chased out of it, and even like you know, new student guitars will oftentimes have issues with the frets, with the setup, um, sometimes with hardware. And so it's just nice to get something that's, you know, already been worked through. 
Um, before this guitar was brought here, however, I want to talk about another piece of work that was done, not by me here, but by somebody in the past. Um, if you look and see this little dot here, um, this little dot is part of a system called a bridge doctor. Uh, and you can look these up online, um, and they were a big thing uh, back in the 80s. And basically what it does is it prevents uh, the kind of bowing that happens in a soundboard that can cause playability and setup issues, and also the kind of bowing that can kind of tend to happen with weather. It kind of stabilizes things, you know, on, on humid days versus not humid days when the top can kind of come up and then like kind of go back down. Uh, you got a little bit of less of that with a bridge doctor in there. Um, I, uh, I'll say that uh, companies that still use this system uh, are uh, the only one that I can think of really that, that puts these in just out of the factory is, is Breedlove. Uh, but if you ever sat down and played a Breedlove, they're, they're pretty great sounding guitars. And so, um, you know, there's probably something to this system. Uh, I um, left that in here and uh, just figured that if somebody uh, wants a Yamaha with a Bridge Doctor, that, you know, this is, uh, this is kind of the way to go. Um, Yamahas are a good candidate for these Bridge Doctor systems just because the thing that provides the sound that these guitars have is this kind of thin advanced X bracing. If you ever dropped a mirror down inside one of these and looked at the braces and compared it to something like a Martin um, or like a Taylor, you'll notice that the braces in Yamaha guitars are fairly thin. Um, and what that means is that uh, you have a lot less weight on the top of the guitar, which enables it to move a lot more, which adds to that volume and projection. It's part of how Yamaha guitars kind of got the nickname of cannons um, back in the day. Um, but uh, the one issue with that uh, thinner bracing is that you get um, a lot more movement in that top because there's not as much material there to resist it. And so one of the issues that these older Yamahas face is that if you look at the soundboards, a lot of times they do actually have that, uh, they do have that flex in them, that bowing outward. And uh, that is something that can also interfere with these vintage Yamahas taking a reset, or sorry, taking a setup. Um, you know, and also just like necessitating that reset and, you know, some healthy, you know, structural work that tends to take place on these. But that's already been done. It's installed. And uh, as you can see, there's a, a little bit of a belly there, which is desirable, but it's not overly so. So it is, uh, you know, it's in good shape. Um, Back of the guitar looks great. Uh, finish on the guitar looks great. Um, the only uh, cosmetic complaints that I could have about it are that at some point uh, the back ends of these two tuners uh, went missing. At least they're symmetrical. Um, the guts of those tuners are still there though and uh, I am sure that these parts could be uh, found on uh, eBay if anybody actually cares. Though um, I may, may actually, although these tuners are some of the better tuners that Yamaha put out, um, I uh, would also say that, uh, you know, if you're getting to the point where you're looking at stuff like that, it's very easy to just replace the tuners as well. Um, and, uh, you know, that might be a way that you want to go. Though one thing that I'll say about these tuners that I do like is that these are slot headed tuners. Um, and if you are interested in um, like older vintagey kind of looking tuners, uh, slot heads definitely have that look, but they also have the added benefit that you're able to pop these strings on and off the tuners without destroying them. Um, I really wish that more companies would go back to using these slotted head, uh, these slotted post tuners, just because, like, especially on guitars like Stratocasters and Telecasters, where, like, in some cases, like, you just need to get under the pick guard to do the work on it, and the strings are kind of attached on both ends and fixed it's very difficult to get into those guitars without risking breaking the strings, where if they got, you know, these kind of tuners, I can just go in and pop them off, do my cleaning, uh, do my repair work or whatever. In your case, if you're a player, you're probably gonna wanna get in there and do some cleaning once in a while. And maybe like, you know, you got it strung up and go, oh man, I, I forgot to rub down the fretboard. Well, this makes that a lot easier to just go in, and, you know, kind of do that afterwards. But anyway, um, yeah, again, that's the uh, Yamaha FG160, um, probably around 
1975 is where I'm gonna kind of peg this. It may be a 74, maybe a little bit earlier than that. Um, the uh, ad will have pictures of the label and you can go and compare that. Yamaha serial numbers are a little bit hard to peg, but not that hard to peg because they tended to recycle the serial numbers every 10 years. And so generally what you gotta do is you gotta look at the serial number and then compare that to the labels that were being used during certain periods. Um, and, you know, in, in some cases, some of the models really don't have uh, serial numbers that are that trackable. And so you just kind of got to look, look at the label, look at the color of the finish and kind of guesstimate, you know, when that guitar was produced. Um, but uh, I'm fairly, fairly sure that this was produced like, you know, within three years of 1975, you know, going back, um, maybe a little earlier, like I said. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, play you out and, uh, you know, if you're interested in this guitar, please check out the ads. You can either buy it on Reverb or you can, uh, you know, if you're local to Seattle, you can uh, check out the Craigslist page, give me a call and come by and try it out. Uh, this guitar does come with a chipboard case. Uh, as far as I know, it's the original chipboard case uh, and so it'll be easy to ship to you uh, and uh, I'm, sure that, uh, I'm sure that it could use a good home. So I'm going to go ahead and play you out.